ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Tube Investments Q4 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anupam Gupta from IIFL Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Siko. Um, welcome everyone to the Tube Investments uh, 4Q FI23 conference call. Uh, from the management, we have Mr. Valian Subaya, Executive Vice Chairman, Mr. M.A.M. Arunachalam, Executive Chairman at TII, Mr. Mukesh Yahuja, Managing Director, Mr. Srinivasan, Director and Head Metal Form Products, Mr. K.K. Paul, Managing Director at TI Clean Mobility, Mr. Murari, Head Engineering Business, and Mr. A.N. Amayappan, the Chief Financial Officer. Um, I'll hand over to Mr. Velian for the opening remarks, post which we can have the Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Anupam. Um, the Board of Directors met uh, yesterday and approved the financial results for the quarter. The Board has declared an interim dividend of Rs. 2 per share uh, in February, and the same was paid to shareholders in March. Now, there's a final dividend of one rupee fifty per share for the financial year 2022-23. Um, and good morning, everyone. So we'll just take you through the standalone results for the quarter, and then I'll give you a quick consolidated summary at the end. So standalone revenue in Q4 was at 1,663 crores compared with 1,735 crores for the same period last year. And for the year, it was at 7,236 crores compared to 6,359 for the same period last year. PBT for the quarter was... Um, <clears throat> 331 crores against 173 crores in the same period last year. PBT for the year uh, uh, is 928 crores compared with 628 crores for the same period last year. ROIC uh, is at 54.5% for the year ended March uh, 31st, 2023, compared with 46.8% uh, for the previous year. And free cash flow for the quarter was at 235 crores, and cumulative free cash flow for the year was at 608 crores, 608 crores, which is 91% of PAT. A quick summary, the engineering business uh, revenue for the quarter was 1,444 crores, uh, compared with 1,030 in the corresponding quarter, and PBIT was 132 as against 103. Uh, revenue for the full year was 4,562, uh, compared to 3,868. Uh, and PBIT was 549 for the full year as against 376, which is a growth of 46%. Uh, metal formed had a revenue for th of 347 as against 336, and PBIT was 45 as against 39. Revenue for the full year was uh, 1,424 compared with 1,240 in the same period last year. PBIT was 174 as against 136, which is a growth of 28%. For our mobility, which is our cycles business, uh, our bicycle business, revenue for was at 155 crores compared with 249, so that was our biggest drop. And our uh, loss uh, uh, was five crores as against the profit of 13 crores. The revenue for the full year was at 800 crores compared with 963 crores in the previous year. And PBT for the full year, PBIT for the full year was 17 as against 55. Uh, revenue for the quarter uh, for other businesses was 191 compared to 194. Uh, and PBIT for the quarter was 11 crores as against 4 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Revenue full year for other businesses, 768 compared to 562. And PBIT was 48 compared to 36. Uh, at a console level, consolidated revenue for the quarter was 3778 as against 3393. Uh, and uh, consolidated profit um, was 403 as against 291. Uh, for the year, consolidated revenue was 14,965 as against 12,447. And uh, PBIT, uh, PBT, um, uh, the 
uh, was at 1,593 as against 1,111. Uh, I think we've talked about the performance of our subsidiaries, um, but uh, you know, CG Power and Shanti Gear being the two main subsidiaries that we've, we've talked to. Commenting on the financial results, Mr. M.A. Marnachalam uh, said engineering and uh, metal form product businesses continue their good performance in the fourth quarter as well. The bicycle industry continues to suffer from contraction in demand. And our bicycle business works towards cost reduction and improving overall efficiency through cycling. Overall, the company has delivered excellent results in profits and profitability. Our subsidiaries, Power and Infanti Gears, have registered a strong performance and delivered strong results across all segments. So, uh, let me uh, stop with that, uh, and I'll be happy to turn it over to, uh, to the audience for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Anika Mittal from NVESH Research. Please go ahead. Uh, me, sir. Uh, my first question is, uh, during the quarter for financial uh, year 23, I noticed a profit of rupees 166 crores from the discontinued operation mentioned in the console financial statement. In the notes, it is stated that CG Power had received a liquidation order for one of its subsidiaries. Could you please provide more details on the reason behind the liquidation and which item this topic belongs to? So I think the question is on uh, the liquidation of the uh, of, uh, of CG Power subsidiaries. So, ma'am, yes, so uh -huh. I think that is specifically talking to to PSOL or is it talking about the Belgian subsidiary? Uh, in the control state. If you notice that there is a profit of 166 crores of discontinued operations. So, so, maybe, so, so, mm -hmm. so, answer here. so what happened was uh, with Middle East, yeah, we have a subsidiary in Middle East, CG Power Middle East, where they had certain liabilities on their balance sheet. So, since uh, they, they, it was there in the balance sheet, once the subsidy was liquidated, these amounts got written back into the balance sheet of CG Power and uh, thereby got. Consolidated with TI. So that's the reason for this profit. That's the profit on uh, deconsolidation. Yeah. This profit of uh, deconsolidation. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thanks, sir. Uh, sorry? Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, sir, what is the reason why this uh, deconsolidation? What? What is the reason behind this uh, liquidation? No, we, as you know, and uh, ma'am, uh, as you know, the CG Power has been kind of uh, liquidating or kind of closing down all of its non-operational assets. The, okay. CG Power had a lot of non-operational subsidiaries overseas, which they've been closing down. Okay. Uh, okay, so thanks. And my second question is, uh, company with XBI and other multiple investors has planned to invest rupees 1,000 crores in subsidiary TI team. What is the rationale behind this investment and how company going to utilize this amount? The, okay. Is your question that multiples has invested in TI CMPL? Is that yeah. your question, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in the TI team, that company... TI CMPL is uh, a company that is, uh, it is a subsidiary that's basically making electric vehicles. Um, yeah. And so the money has been raised to basically develop and manufacture electric vehicles that we will sell. Um, and uh, that is the reason why we raised the money. Um, and how come we going to utilize this amount? Means for up to when it can utilize and in what way it can utilize. 
how will we utilize the amount? So it will be, it will go towards either product development or manufacturing, ma'am, of the electric vehicles. Okay. And sir, so, um, what is the strategy behind acquisition of Lotus Surgical Private Limited? So as we have spoken in TI2, uh, we are looking at kind of uh, new lines of business to basically uh, diversify into. And we've talked, uh, you know, uh, in several previous calls as well, saying that the medical products and consumables business will be a space that we are getting into. So this is yeah. just, uh, this is the com uh, this is the completion of the acquisition in that area. Miss Anika Mittal, may we request that you return to the question queue okay. for follow up questions okay. as there are several participants waiting their turn. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswell Financial Services. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. Uh, a couple of questions from my side. One is on the existing business, uh, both engineering and microform, we have seen flattish kind of uh, revenue performance on YY basis. Uh, is there any uh, uh, negative impact of uh, commodity cost deflation over here and the underlying business growth is strong? Or uh, can you highlight any other factors which have led to this uh, weaker revenue growth? So you are right, Signesh, right? We this because of the raw metal prices coming down in Q2 and Q3, uh, which we have to pass on to our customers, uh, uh, whatever contract we have with our customers, because of that it is coming down. Otherwise, uh, on absolute volume basis, we are both engineering as well as metal form are growing, irrespective of uh, two-wheeler there is a muted demand, irrespective of that we are able to grow it. So would it be still growing on volume basis on double-digit basis or uh, any indication you can give of the actual growth, the line growth? Uh, it will not be double-digit, but it is a higher single-digit uh, growth will be shortly there. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, and second question pertains to the mobility business. So uh, it seems we further had losses on the electric trailer business setting in PBITF mobility. So can you quantify the loss for the quarter and for the full year uh, for each year? Uh, yeah, I think maybe we should also change our nomenclature. So uh, mobility business that we talk about in the income stream that I just talked about is the bicycle business. Okay. And TITM or TI Clean Mobility is a subsidiary and that is the electric vehicle business. So again, Janesh, then maybe then you can just clarify, are you, which business are you asking about? Uh, I was looking to the standalone, uh, primarily the mobility business and the standalone had losses. So I believe until last quarter, the e 3 year losses were sitting in the standalone side and now the shift has happened uh, of e 3 year to subsidy. No, the three-wheeler even last quarter, as soon as the subsidiary was created, uh, which was okay. what? Which March, March 22. March 22. From March 22 okay. onwards, uh, three-wheeler has always been in the subsidiary. What you see in mobility is only the bicycle business. So maybe we'll also change the language in what we call them. Next, we'll change it. Uh, so mobility and, and the loss you're seeing is for the bicycle business. Genesis. And that's a one-time loss. Maybe in the Q4 we have booked it because of some uh, internal thing, which is a one-time. Okay. And what would be that quantum of one-time impact? Uh, whatever loss you are able to see that, maybe you can say... It would have been flat without. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. And lastly, can you clarify on the uh, uh, TI, uh, clean mobility, what kind of uh, valuation will this fundraise uh, uh, result in? Uh, and uh, this question has been asked. Uh, we've not disclosed. Part of the reason is that it will be a variable amount, right? Um, and uh, you know, so we've not disclosed it from that perspective uh, because it does depend on the actual performance of the business itself. Okay, but any range of stake which will get benefited based on this? Dinesh, I think we'd rather not give a range. Okay. Okay. No worries. I'll back in queue. Thanks. Thank you.
uh, our next question is from the line of Nishit Jalan from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my questions are, uh, are on the launches on the electric vehicle side. I uh, just wanted to understand uh, when are we planning to start uh, the launches of the three-wheeler tractors and truck. Any updated timelines uh, that you can share? And what has led to the delays compared to your uh, previous uh, uh, expectations? I think two things. The launch of the three-wheeler, we have uh, started now. You know, so we have launched in the southern states of Karnataka, Kerala, and others. Currently, also the launch is going on. Products are being received very well, uh, and we are in the process of ramping up the production for the three-wheeler. Actually, so that's how the three-wheeler. In response to the question of your delays, the question of your delays was because of the change in the standard dictated by the government in terms of the air standards for homologation. So we had to re-homologate uh, the product once more, you know, for the battery, the motor, the controller, so on and so forth. So there were delays associated with that, which were, you know, statutory in nature and we had to comply with that. Other than that, from our trials, etc., whatever improvements we have to do, we did it now. And now we are launching them. That's as far as three wheelers concerned. As far as the, the tractor vertical is concerned, we are in the process of developing the products. The first lot of tooled up samples for trials will be done in June, July period. And post that, from those trials, whatever rectification we have to do, we will do. And then have the homologation done and go to market somewhere closer to the end of the year. So that's how the tractor scenario is looking like. As far as the uh, heavy duty truck is concerned, we are in the process of now selling the truck. We are manufacturing the trucks in a new manufacturing facility as to manage them. And uh, we've lined up customers and we are in the process of selling quantum. We are carefully selecting the customers and then doing some trials and then, you know, getting into sales. But the sales will happen this month, I'll buy slowly. And then, you know, we as a customer and we get confidence, we'll be scaling up the volumes in the subsequent months. The manufacturing facility to scale up these volumes is in place. And now we are getting the market organized in terms of this to be able to do that along with the financing, etc., so on and so forth. I hope I'm answering your question. Yes. So just a couple of follow-ups. Uh, so uh, from your comments, I assume that uh, the truck product, uh, heavy truck product, has already been homologated, and the uh, process of selling and manufacturing has started now. Is that correct understanding? That's correct. We just got in the AIS-156 Part 2 homologation okay. done. And okay. now, you know, we, we, we have the certificate with us. And we are waiting for that, although we were ready in manufacturing. And, and once we get the official certificate, which will be in the day or two, then you will be in a position to fix the sale. Got it. That's good to hear, sir. And, and secondly, on the three-wheeler uh, uh, EV side, uh, uh, can you clarify if we, we will be getting same incentives for these products? Does the, uh, uh, are we, are we uh, meeting all the requirements of same? We are meeting all the requirements of same. Uh, till the time the same subsidy is there, you know, we will be repeating the same subsidy. Actually, our MIS, etc., is actually totally geared once we employ you know, and from the invoice, it is actually floated onto their portal, and from there it automatically gets registered for for the same subsidy. So that's all in place. Till the time the same subsidy is there, for the three will we'll continue to do that. Got it. And just one last final question is on the overall capex. I uh, just wanted to understand what is the total capex for FI24 uh, for the standalone business as well as for the EV subsidiaries or maybe any uh, medical devices that we require, any capex that we have planned for this year? So the total capex is 800 crores. 
uh, that will include uh, that will include kind of our existing business, business as well as new initiatives and new new initiatives. Uh, and then uh, you have a separate capex for DIC MPL, which will be uh, in the range of about uh, 300 to 400. Yeah. So 800 crores in the standalone and 300 to 400 in DIC MPL. And this standalone 800 will also include the investment that you will make into the subsidiary business, right? Uh, yes. That's right. right. It's like right. The medical and uh, everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Saif Saurabh Gujjar from ICICI Prudential AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My first morning. question is on the engineering business. So last quarter we had talked about some muted demand from exports. So from Jan 23 onwards, how has been the trend in terms of exports there? Uh, as we discussed last time, maybe Q4 uh, was a little bit slower. It is almost flattish but we are able to see a good uptick in demand from Q1. So you will see numbers improving going forward in the Q1. Okay. And in term, uh, my second question is on the metal form business. So uh, any traction we have started seeing in railways now? Uh, KRS, you will take this. Yeah, actually, Vasan here. Um, yeah, the railways, and uh, they are in the process of making production scheduling plans the coach factors. So end of this quarter, we are likely to uh, see the tenders getting released. So we hope the demand to go up in the second quarter. We'll be getting orders uh, in the second quarter. That is the uh, you know, outlook so far. Uh, so in which sub-segments we are mainly focusing on within the we'll, Yeah, we'll be focusing on the coach segment, passenger, you know, coaches. Okay, and anything on freight side, uh, do we plan to bring in any new products or it would be only on the coach side? Uh, majorly, it will be on the coach side. Um, on the freight side, already we have our product lines, but railways uh, are in the process of finalizing their you know dedicated freight corridor plans. Once those plans are out, then I know we'll be uh, ready to take on uh, that demand. Okay, and so my last question yeah. is on uh, TI2 and TI3. Any further opportunities you have identified under it currently? Uh, no, I mean, so there's nothing specific beyond what we've already talked about at this stage. Like we said, we continue the process of looking at opportunities, but there's nothing specific that they want to comment on. And in addition to that, as of now, we are in execution mode for medical. Uh, subsidy Lotus, what we discussed, it is executed, and CDMO also is going to uh, let's say start the process in this quarter. Uh, and meantime, we are identifying new opportunities. Okay, thanks, sir. That's all. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Kaushik Mohan from Ashika Stockbroking, please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for the great set of numbers, sir. Uh, I just wanted to understand while reading your uh, report, I just want to understand that long-term borrowing for an uh, aggregate sum of uh, exceeding rupees 300 crores. Can I understand uh, why uh, why this borrowing is coming and uh, what are this been used for? Oh, it is, yeah. Go ahead. Then. It's an enabling resolution which we have got. We are not borrowed anything at this point in time. Our long, long term debt is zero at this point in time. And that's an enabling resolution which we get every year. So, yeah. Got it, sir. And another clarity I need it on, uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, what is uh, on a normal life basis, your, this time your cash conversion cycle has been very strong. Uh, can we assume uh, this trend to be in the future? Cash conversion. Yes. yes, we continue to focus, be focused on the cash generation and we'll continue to deliver on that. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhishek Podar from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, Abhishek. 
Mr. Abhishek, your line has been unmuted. You can go ahead with your question. Hi, good morning. Sorry, my line was muted. Uh, hi, sir. Regarding this uh, TICMPL, I uh, wanted to understand uh, how should we think about the economic interest that the company will retain in this uh, subs, you know, EV mobility business. Uh, some understanding that what is today and how it will be shaping up you know, in future. <laughs> so I think you all are ending up with the same question. So let us then think through how to communicate this, you know, so that you, you guys get the answer that you're looking for. You understand kind of what you're trying to, or why you want it. So let us think, think about how we can kind of communicate it in a fashion that will be useful. Uh, understood, sir. And sir, also about this business, you know, currently it's a bit loss. So, any internal targets, you know, that you want to share that when it will be breaking even at, uh, let's say, EBITDA level, at PBT level, uh, you know, timelines uh, or some understanding in how many years it could take? Now, I think it's very difficult to say at this stage. I mean, our current plans basically say that it will take a minimum of two years, right? So, I think that's the best assumption we can take. Uh, right, and should we assume that uh, three wheelers will be the first one to break even and followed by heavy duty and then uh, the tractors? I would say uh, you can't determine that, but it will be something, it will either be heavy duty or three wheeler. Uh, yeah. Uh, understood, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sundar S. From Avendis, please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have three questions. The first one. The line for Mr. Sundar has dropped. We are, may I request the management? We move to the next question. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Manoj Bajpai. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning and thanks for uh, giving the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, this is more strategic in nature, especially on the strategy on the seeding new platform that is T12. Uh, what I wanted to understand was, are there any earmark figures from cash flow which you think that this this is amount of uh, or percentage wise we are going to deploy over the next three, four, five years into this this particular strategy? And uh, what are the kind of timelines you are looking at probably stopping this or probably seeing how your investments plan out and then taking a next level of call? So that's 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 a question which I have. Yeah, so if you look at it this year, uh, you know, about 50% of the cash flow will go towards this and 50% will go towards existing uh, the TI1 uh, cash flow expansion opportunities. So I think that number can vary, uh, you know, between kind of, you know, first off, so the first thing is whatever TI1 needs, right? Um, they will get right, and so then that kind of helps us determine how much we can put towards uh, TI2. Um, there are two things that we look at, right? Which is like a, we don't, at least from TI's perspective, we don't see. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we've always articulated this, right? Saying that the maximum we will go up to is two years negative uh, free cash flow, and we continue to kind of reiterate that same comment. Uh, that's kind of core to our planning. And like you know, this this far we've been able to manage with pretty much no debt, uh, but that is central to our planning as well. And uh, in terms of the product portfolio expansion, or probably the lines of business which you are looking at, uh, currently you have probably invested in uh, two, three similar line of businesses. One is into mobility, second is into the uh, automotive industry. So are there any specific areas which you are specifically looking into uh, this particular strategy of seeding new businesses? Yeah, see, it is basically uh, it's focused on. We we get, I think we've talked about this criterion a, a couple of times on previous calls, right? Which is, you know, uh, to basically use, uh, you know, so some of it is based on kind of where we see India's GDP growth coming from, you know, where India, how India is going to shift over the next, uh, you know, ten to twenty years. Um, that is the first kind of you know gating factor. The second is we've talked about 
you know, using India as uh, the market to kind of to learn the opportunity and then expanding, using that as a way to kind of start export to the rest of the world, but India being the first market. Uh, so there's several different filters, and we've talked about these filters in prior calls as well. Um, so none of those criteria are changing, I would say, from our perspective. Uh, and we continue to kind of use the same criteria and kind of uh, and the same approach to filter industry that we look at. Uh, this last one, a small one, that what is the kind of time frame you are internally looking to give to a particular business in terms of its uh, success uh, or other putting uh, putting the plug on this business if, if it is not working for you? So you have any sort of internal uh, thought process on that, that maybe three year, four year you'll give to a business and then take a call? So I, I think in uh, between two and three years, we have like what we would call a go, no go check. Right? Okay. And that is basically seeing uh, whether we continue or not, right? Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the business has to scale within that time frame. Mm -hmm. It just means that you know the the conditions with which we went in need yeah. to be maintained, uh, and we need to continue that that we we are convinced that that business continues to be a good opportunity. So that's basically how we're looking at it at this day. Okay, thanks. Thanks, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Sundar S. from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, sir, the first question is on the standalone business. I just want to understand, has all the raw material impact been passed on, or should we see some impact coming through for the next few quarters too? Uh, we have various contracts with the various customers. Maybe some part is already passed on and something will happen in the Q1 also. It is not that entirely is passed on. Perfect, sir. Thank you. And the second one, uh, uh, Mr. Valen, can you show some thoughts in terms of the venture into the CDMO? Because this is something that was not discussed earlier. What was the thought process here and how should we look at this business from a three-year perspective? So, um, the, uh, you, know, you know that, uh, so basically we've, we've been having discussions with, uh, Go, with Govind who's basically kind of, you know, helped found the business with us, uh, you know, I would say for over, close to uh, between 18 months now almost, I would say. Uh, the, the reason really is that we see CDMO as a huge growth opportunity uh, for the country itself. Um, as you know, globally, um, you know, a lot of it has been done in China, and the large CDM of uh, people in China, I would say, are almost like 10 times the size of the largest player in India. Um, the, with what's happening kind of geopolitically, a lot of that is beginning to shift now uh, towards India, and is, I would say, strongly in India's favor. Uh, the uh, so our belief is that you know over the next decade it is a good opportunity to kind of grow this business and like I've said again about the businesses we're getting, Don't on this, yeah. we are really taking Don't a 25, uh, 25 to 30 year view uh, so that is our thinking kind of going into this uh, and uh, specifically towards our plan for the three years, uh, Govind, uh, do you want to jump in and kind of provide your perspective? Yeah, I think uh, three years uh, is a period like it is too short of the manufacturing uh, per se, and that you would agree with us, like because we had to get the plant uh, ready and uh, file the product and get it inspected, and that is the time frame by which I think all this would happen, so that I think we'll be able to promote the manufacturing business more with the customers, including emerging farmers and innovative companies. But by the time, I think the lab uh, would have started delivering on the FTEs, uh, is what I would say over the three-year period. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you for the perspective. And one last one on TICMGL. Should we assume that TI's investment into TICMGL would be limited to 7 to 6 months and committed as of now? Yes, we've already said that. Okay, so it wouldn't exceed beyond the 7 to 6 months that we've committed. No. Perfect. And last one is on the same subsidy with several state governments indicating that they would want to pull out of the same subsidy. How do you look at this impacting the TAC and business, specifically on the three wheeler side? So, yeah, so like we said, uh, in our other platforms, both on tractor and on uh, heavy truck, same is not there. Uh, but, you know, even on three wheeler, 
we have not we don't have any fame in our business plan and assumptions beyond march 24 but you don't see that impact in the penetration of the category itself because i thought no. break even significantly widened once you remove the fame subsidy see we believe that all of these categories you know have the ability to kind of break even uh, over time right now kind of would it accelerate absolutely so would we support it if fame was extended absolutely uh but you know does it mean that we will not kind of uh, have i mean pursue the business if fame was not there uh, no we will continue to pursue the business sir no sir and one last one can you throw some light on the capacities that we currently have on the ev side on three wheeler hcv as well as on tractor and where are we looking to ramp it up with the uh, 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 cash flow that's coming so three wheeler okay go ahead sir on three wheeler three ship business we have a capacity of 90000 uh, three wheeler annually on the tractor side the capacity is about 25000 in the phase one and uh, so is for the heavy duty truck so we covered up uh, in terms of capacity for a year year and a half and you know post that we'll see how things pan out heavy duty will not be Yeah, heavy duty won't be twenty five thousand. I think you said will be twenty five thousand. So heavy duty will be two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred, but on three ship basis, we just talked about two ship. Yeah, certainly. But so, but not uh, so two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred on the on the heavy duty side. Two thousand five hundred, three thousand. Perfect. So thanks for the clarification and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhishek Ghosh from DSP. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, a few questions, sir. Uh, you know, on the standalone part of the business, you have a substantial uh, contribution from a two wheeler, which is kind of coming in. So, any any uh, outlook on that industry? Any any thoughts in terms of recovery on that and sustenance of the volume growth? Any thoughts on that, sir? uh abhishek maybe let's say like we know that we can't control the industry what we can do is internal uh, how do we even the industry is not growing how can we focus on the other uh, let's say industry like cv is doing pretty well pv is doing pretty well there is a good op- exports opportunities available and government is spending huge money on the construction side of the story how we can leverage that so we are working on that at the same time we have a sufficient capacity if even two wheeler does well we'll be able to participate that and there we are working on some new product development uh, because uh, the introduction of ev and the light weighting it is going to have some opportunities so we are going to participate that also okay so it is fair to assume sir the stand loan capex that you have spoken about uh, 50% of that 800 crores majority of that you know will kind of go into these uh, these segments which are seeing growth areas and not so much into two, two wheeler is that the way to look at it as and now you can yeah there's no more investment in the in the two wheeler side we got yes. half capacity oh okay. great that's helpful so the other thing is uh, you know to one of the oems whom you already uh, provide uh, some of the products they have spoken about a large investment in in chennai you think that can be beneficiary to you i think last week they have announced that so you think that can be beneficial to you over the next 3 to 5 years in any thoughts on obviously, that obviously yes uh, like you know that may be uh, ti uh, participates all the oems may be we are fairly present so any investments planned in the new whether it's in south or west we are surely going to participate in that okay great uh, uh, so just one question to will answer in terms of uh, if you look at the uh, you know new uh, investments in last you no know, 12 to 18 months you got into medical devices you also have spoken about electronics now cdmo ev also you know it's kind of ramping up so uh, obviously you we've also spoken about many more areas but for now is it fair to assume that over the next 12 months you would want to consolidate and bring all these uh, incubating business to certain level and then will you look at investments into new or how should we look at it just your thoughts there sir Yeah, I mean, obviously, kind of these businesses now are going into execution mode, and so that is definitely the intent, right? Uh, so, like we've said with some of these, you can't time all of these perfectly. What we will do is continue to manage our cash flow with the criteria that we've specified to you, right? 
right? Uh, but you are right in the sense that with a lot of these businesses now, our, our focus is moving more to to execution mode and being able to kind of get, uh, you know, get performance on the existing business. So if I was more trying to understand on the on your bandwidth cash flow. I'm we have, we have seen the way you executed, but on your bandwidth, just from that perspective. So that's the only way we're trying to understand. Yeah, no, so I think your statement is fair. But you know, like like I said, uh, you know, the exploration side is something that will always be an ongoing exercise, right? Because it is part of kind of you know identifying things for the long term. But a majority of my time is is going to be spent kind of now on kind of ensuring that the execution of the existing business will happen more successfully. Great. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prithvi Raj from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, I just have one question. So right now you are getting into many new businesses. So Maybe of five years down the line, how do we see these revenues contributing to the overall true business? I mean, any drops and so on, some percentage number? See, it's a bit tough to predict. I think we've always kind of guided that TI1, our current belief is that TI1 will grow at between 12 and 15% a year, right? Uh, somewhere in that range. Uh, but you know, uh, TI3 has kind of always been, uh, you know, it, it's been a bit kind of, it's very, it's very difficult to kind of predict, you know, what that revenue contribution would be, right? As you can see, kind of console, uh, you know, now our other businesses are kind of as large as CI or maybe even larger. Um, the uh, so it's a bit difficult because of the lumpy nature, uh, but you know, obviously. Uh, our, our broad view is that you know each of these businesses has the potential to be at least as large as TI is today, which is why we're getting into them. Right. So whether they reach that potential within five years or you know eight years, we need to see. But that is the belief with which we're going into it, right? With each of these new businesses. Got it. And one question on TI Clean Mobility: Is it possible for you to quantify the losses in this quarter and in this financial year? I mean, the so losses for a quarter were about 28 crores. And for the year? No, we don't. We can't predict for the year. For, for the previous, for the previous year, year, 23 full year. 102 crores. Okay. Thanks. Sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv Bhatia from Bank of India Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir. Uh, so my actually my question is on Shanti gears. Do I understand that you don't like to answer on them? But let me try my luck. I just you know generally on a quarterly basis you do provide the order inflow and order book for Shanti gears, uh, but this time you haven't provided. If it's possible to share that data. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected. The management line has dropped. We will reconnect them quickly. Line for the management has reconnected. Mr. Drew Bhatia, you can go ahead with your question. Could you please repeat your question? Sure. So, 
so so actually my question was on shanti gears i was saying that you know i do understand you don't like to answer questions on shanti gears on this call but uh, let me try my luck actually you know generally you provide the quarterly order info and order book for shanti gears but this time around you haven't provided is it possible to share the order info and order book for shanti gears i would say again yeah because again we don't want to start this off with again the same kind of trend starts up i would just suggest you, you can you can write uh do we have kind of you can write to kind of even ti investor relations you want and you know with that with your specific questions and if it's, it's shareable data then we can see we have to disclose it in public domain to everybody so we'll, we'll think about how to do that sure thank you so much hmm? thank you thank you our next question is from the line of hardik doshi from white whale partners please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question um uh, my question is actually related to cdm of business uh you know uh, typically in like most of these diversification or acquisition that we done uh you know it it's been more towards uh, you know auto or auto related or you know there's actually man hard hard manufacturing uh, that done i just want to understand from uh, the cdm perspective what is the cube or ti value addition on there see i mean again if you think from a uh, multiple i always think of it as kind of you know you take so many guys who have grown right i mean like i mean like you know kind of one of our models is danaha right um and when i look at danaha what they really bring to the table is you know the approach to the business what they call dbs right or danaha business system and you know we are trying to kind of define the same for ourselves in what we call ti way right and so actually what makes danaha i would kind of argue as competitive as it is um is the fact that it can bring dbs to every business that it goes into right uh and similarly the way we look at it in terms of new businesses we see if there's an opportunity to bring that kind of thinking to every business we go into uh and then that specifically then kind of has implications for sales and marketing for operations and for r&d uh and you know our approach to sales and marketing how we can help so having access to kind of you know what i would what would, a larger and more scalable global organization uh, obviously kind of helps you think very differently from how a startup would approach it right and so i think that that has inherent advantages so those two things right kind of you know the access to a global organization and uh you know using pi way just like danaha uses dbs uh, i think is the core to kind of how what what we can bring to it uh you know just continuing on that like, you know ti way have we like kind of i mean is there a detail kind of guideline like uh, you know actually i know something that is like you know already formulated formulated and is it possible for us to like kind of access that or see that no so it, it is something we use internally it is kind of continuing to involve uh, you know as we continue to work with uh, shinge jitsu and other uh, lean consultants in that process but it's not something that we share in public domain uh, like uh, dana shares dbs okay okay great thanks so much yeah, thank you thank you A reminder to all participants: You may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Vimal Gohil from Alchemy Capital Management. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question on TIA clean mobility have been answered. I just had a question on uh, the standalone piece uh, uh, regarding the other segment. Uh, my belief is that uh, we include our uh, industrial change export business in this. uh the yoy a slight decline that we see in this business is uh, would would largely be explained by that or is there any other segment which which might have contributed to that thanks so uh, as i mentioned actually it's not just industry change export the entire industry change is part of the other segment so your result your assessment in terms of uh, decline in the exports is is is, is okay i mean it's correct Uh, so could you provide some more uh, detail around the other uh, you know products that uh, that that are included in the in the other segment so i guess we've uh, already performed that some of the other businesses were which were incubated in in the other which has now been consolidated which is our tmt and certain other businesses along with the industrial chain 
right and how are these businesses doing excluding the industry chain so the tnt the others other so uh, i guess uh, it's a commodity business at the moment but we are we are kind of uh, we've reached a stage where we know how the business is performing so we are still evaluating as mr valen said we are looking at a three to five year time frame where we decide in terms of how we want to do go ahead and do this business well. so yeah so we are in that stage where we probably we have a dedicated business team which is handling this and we'll take an appropriate call on that yeah as of now there are no uh, systemic concerns or whatever Thank and the uh, export uh, business will is expected to improve uh, when you said that the overall yes. exports uh, that that would include the industrial chain, chain exports as well yeah yeah mr mukesh already alluded on that uh, i think you mentioned that we can see some uptick in q1 q q1 and onwards understood sir thank you so much and all the very best thank you thank you thank you our next question is from the line of mr anupam gupta from iifl securities limited please go ahead yeah um this continuing on the export piece sir um, firstly what was the total export share for uh, the standalone business in fy23 it's about 17% okay and if you were to split it between engineering and um, industrial chains so what was the share if you are if you are sharing we generally report together and uh, as a norm we uh, okay. at a ta level export numbers and we'll continue to do that sure and uh, do you would you say that this uh, target to maybe double this in in 3 years in terms of share is that target still on or do you see any changes to that surely we want to double it but maybe 3 years will be a little tougher but we are working on that okay okay understand sir um, the second question is you said the capex for standalone would capex and investment for standalone is 800 crore for fy24 Uh, is it right to assume that it includes uh, the 285 crore for CDMO and 233 crore for Lotus in in that, or is it separate? You can yes, it is inclusive of that. Okay, uh, so the balance, uh, approximately 250 crores, which you'll do apart from these two, is targeted towards what, sir, in terms of the standalone business? It is, ex- it is existing businesses. Maybe let's say what we do with engineering, metal form, will go towards those capexes. Okay, okay, understand. And um, uh, what and the 300 to 400 crore capex which you said for TIE uh, clean mobility, um, what is that directed toward? Any specific uh, thing which you can highlight there? As Mr. Good. As Mr. Velen already mentioned, it is going towards the product development and building manufacturing uh, plants. It is going to go towards that. Okay, okay, understand. And just one last question: Is any update on the optic business, which which was which you had trials on for? So, uh, Anupam, it is still going on. Maybe uh, we have made a progress internally in terms of quality and all these things. In uh, acquisition of customer, maybe still working is in progress, and we'll share with you uh, once we are able to crack that. Okay, fine. Uh, that's all for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rishit Javeri from Pi Square Investments. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, congratulations sir, for the good set of numbers. So I wanted to know your growth outlook uh, for FY24 uh, for the standalone segments. Generally, you know, maybe let's say we don't share forward-looking numbers, uh, but we are confident to grow better than the industry growth. That's how maybe I can give you indication as of well. now. Okay, uh, and also to uh, mention that uh, the bicycle business had seen a, a demand pullout from the market. Uh, what's your uh, take that are you seeing any demand uh, uptick in uh, the next two quarters? Uh, yes, as of now, we let's say there is a tough business, so we demand is contracting. So we are internally focused how to cut down cost and do it. Uh, a work whatever we are doing for existing business like export development. That work we have started to build capabilities, and we are hopeful to revive it. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi. from motila lawsol financial services please go ahead oh uh, hi sir a uh, couple of clarifications so uh, there is other income which has gone up quite substantially in this quarter uh, is there any one off or this includes uh, dividends from uh, uh, some of the subsidies 
Yeah, we have received a statement from CG Power. 133 crores is included in that. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, secondly, when we look at the uh, optic lens business, uh, we uh, we're clearly focused on glass lenses. But with the evolution of uh, mobile manufacturing scenario in India, are we also looking at uh, plastic lenses? Given that opportunity, also will be very large. So as this. Yeah, so not at this stage, right? Okay. So first, let's see if we can stabilize this business, then we can look it up. Got it. Got it. And lastly, uh, with respect to uh, the 1200 crore fundraise uh, uh, through the private equity uh, on the EV side, uh, our investment requirement in the foreseeable future would be about 750 crore in the three businesses put together, right? No, no, no. So just to clarify, if we're talking about TI's investment into it, right? TI's investment into it, the incremental investment amount is only about 120 crores. Okay. Um, sorry, um, the rest of the 750 crores has already gone into the business. Yeah, sorry, what I meant was the, uh, the uh, investment requirement of those businesses. In the past, we indicated 250 crore per uh, business on the AV side. Uh, uh, the, the capex requirement or the investment requirement of each of those businesses. So, uh, in that context, I was just trying to understand: uh, uh, is there any change in plan? Are we uh, are we accelerating our capex in those businesses given the opportunity which is there, or 750 crore number for the three businesses still holds true? So again, what we had articulated was when we talked about the three wheeler business, we said that we've got that business up and running for. Uh, around 300 crores, right? Like now you know, as you know, with both the truck and the factor, we acquired companies, so there was an outlay towards that acquisition. The second outlay is towards manufacturing and development, right? So if you include manufacturing, kind of your, your the full stack development team, and uh, the acquisition cost, obviously that combined is going to be more than 300 crores for each of the businesses to get them to market. Got it, got it. That clear text. But thanks for all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Anupam Gupta from IIFL Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Just one last question I had. Uh, so margins obviously in this quarter benefited from the raw material pass through which you did. Um, incrementally, let's say if you assume raw material largely to be a non a non event. Uh, what sort of margin expansion do you think can happen over the next three years in the core business? Uh, we will continue to maintain the current margin, maybe let's say, because we are closer to what we have given the guidelines in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's the answer to your question. Okay, fine. Uh, fine, I think uh, we don't have any further questions. We can uh, close the call. Um, well, if you have any closing remarks, we can take that and then we can close the call. Uh, no, Arvam, I think that's good. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, like I said, you know, the, the important thing for us is, uh, you know, TI1 continues to perform strongly, and uh, so we think that that uh, performance will continue in this financial year. Um, and uh, like you said, kind of, you know, it is going to get important for us to now, uh, especially on, uh, I mean, I think the first one out of the gates will be clean mobility. So to start seeing some growth in that uh, this financial year, which we believe we will start seeing. So uh, uh, you know that's our general kind of outlook. So we we continue to be quite optimistic about uh, you know things going into this year, and uh, we look forward to catching up on the next call. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the management for the time and all the participants as well to join the call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of IIFL Securities Limited. That concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect our lines.